Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I love buying second-hand hardware, such as this lovely EVGA GTX 770 Superclocked that I bought just a few weeks ago on eBay for undisclosed amount of money. This GK104 GPU released in 2013 and still offers great performance across many titles. Please make sure you are subscribed to my channel not to miss the upcoming GPU Wars series of videos. We all agree, with age, certain things won't function as well as when they were new, and the GPU thermal paste is no exception. I then ask a simple question, should you replace the thermal paste when buying second-hand graphics cards? You saw me doing it over and over again with the older AMD cards, but I never really focused on the actual benefit of a fresh MX4, that is until now then. This particular card, whilst well used, does not have huge amount of dust build up, well, the back of the PCB was really dusty, but other than that, I can't say this is too bad. This GTX 770 features EVGA's Active Cooling Extreme Cooler, which is well known to be very efficient. Let's first run a simple valley benchmark and monitor the temps and other stats along. The temps jump up to 80 degrees rather quickly and with a fan speed of just 68%, card is thermally throttled. I have not touched or applied any custom fan curves, this is stock. Now this generation of cards is using the GPU 2.0 boost and we can see it's boosting up to 1163 MHz from the stock 1111, exactly as per EVGA spec sheet, in other words all within the spec. Can this card push its clocks further? We will find out in a moment. I've purchased new testing equipment for the upcoming videos. This sound meter will be a feature for all testing going forwards because I believe noise levels are a very important factor when buying GPUs. I'm no scientist, but kudos to EVGA. This card is very well behaved in this regard. The reading on the meter shows just 55.4 dB with the 68% fan speed. The benchmarks finished and the card achieved 3091 points. But now let's take it apart. I think we would all agree it's a sexy looking card. I love the gold slash champagne looking trim on the black shroud. The card itself is very sturdy and requires one eight and one six pin from your power supply to run. It has a great selection of ports, including an HDMI, a full-sized display port and dual-link DVIs. Technically, the cooler is held in by just four spring-loaded screws, so let's start with those first. The cooler separated easily, nice change from some of those properly baked-in AMD cards that we've seen recently. Fan header next, and then we can look at the ACX cooler itself. According to EVGA, we see a 40% increase in the heatsink volume. I would not disagree. Another nice to have with the ACX is the reinforced base plate, which is to help keeping the PCB straight and also to lower memory temps. Let's get it off, there's 16 screws to remove. Some isopropyl alcohol is always required for this kind of job. And with everything looking nice and clean, time for a blob of fresh MX4 and then to assemble the card back together. Let's rerun the Valley benchmark and check out the drop in the GPU temperature by simply replacing the old thermal paste with drop 10 degrees. Not only that, also look at the GPU core clock now boosting to 1241 up by 7%. GPUs are indicating that we are no longer throttled by the thermals. It's a win-win. The fan speed dropped further to about 63%, but this has not translated in actual noise reduction from already very quiet 55.4 dB. With higher clocks comes higher scores, and the Valley Bench score was now 3,236 points. That's nearly a 5% increase. I think it's a no-brainer. My advice is a firm yes to anyone out there. When you buy a second-hand GPU, 
get that screwdriver out and replace the old thermal paste. Not only you will reduce the temps and prolong lifespan of your cart, you can also get more performance and potentially less noise. And with all of this, a little bonus just for you guys. And believe me when I say it's not easy for me to do this, but can you actually run your GPU with no thermal paste? Warning, do not replicate what you're about to see next. I can't be responsible for any hardware that you destroy. I'm only doing this so that you don't have to. For this experiment, I choose this poor little 4870. It spots a very simple design and it should be really quick to take apart just looking at the four screws and the GPU brace. And immediately, once we got into Windows, a quick check in GPU Z shows extremely hot GPU core at 95 degrees. Bad idea. Let's not kill this GPU and power the system off. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider giving it a like, hit the subscribe button, tell your friends I'm cool, and all of that. <laughs> I hope to see you all in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.